It's Roger, and today I might be able to save your life or someone you love. And I am not kidding, my friends. Do not click off of this, please. I have been looking for the smoking gun. I found a smoking gun. It is the microvilli, which holds the bacteria and the digestive enzymes that do the job to keep you healthy. And if they are not there, or they are damaged, or they are weak, you will perforate that membrane, and it will invade your body and give you chronic diseases, not necessarily kill you, but and eventually it likely will as a cancer from this invasion. Now, I am going to brush border. I'm going to go backwards by how I discovered this. I've been talking about membranes and bacteria and transition metals and carboxylation and all the things that your body does. It's just but naturally, that's just the na nature of your body. You live, and I live, with bacteria. Half of us is bacteria. That is the thing that actually does the job to make you healthy. Now, brush border, there's a bunch of stuff out here about the sizes of them. They're so small they can't see them. All they can see is the tiny little fuzzy little thing. So, here's what it says. Now, Brush border cells are, bound, are found in the following main locations. The small intestine tract, here I'm going to take this out of this. So, the small intestine tract, there is where absorption takes place of all the things you want. The brush border of the intestinal lining are the site of terminal carbohydrate digestion. The microvilli, the con microvilli, tiny, 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 these things up here, tiny little niches that hold all of these little collections of bacteria. The microvilli that constitute the brush border have enzymes. Enzymes are the things that are the chemistry sets that do the job to break these molecules apart so you can digest them. This is so simple when you look at it. For this final part of digestion <laughs> are anchored into this apical plasma membrane. I don't know what to say. This is this is it. As integral membrane proteins, integral, they are part of that, integrated into that protein. If they are dead, you're in trouble. If you don't have those enzymes, those enzymes were created from bacteria. These enzymes are found near to near to the transporters, <laughs> which is where your carboxylation takes place. Your um, transition metals work that will then allow absorption of the digested nutrients. You can't get there if you don't have that stuff. Then the same thing in the kidney. Here, brush border useful in distinguishing these these areas and keeping the things away from the things that are going to kill you. And the same thing here. These membranes keep all of this stuff out that isn't supposed to attack your tissues inside those membranes. It's really, 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 really so basic. They're found there, and they're found in the large intestine, the microvilla, and the surface of these. They're all over these places where you ha and they're not only there. That's where they're looking for them for uh, um, absorption and digestion and so forth. These things are in, you know, not in maybe digestive ones, but maybe also digestive ones. But they're all inside of all your duct work and your your blood vessels and, and all of the things that separate and fascia, blood cells even. They have a hydrophilic, hydrophobic layer to keep things separated. It's a membrane. If you can't separate things, it will invade you. Now listen to what Gill had to say. He's the guy that did all the autopsy. He's an autopsy guy. Owns his own school. He's a PhD. Owns an, his own autopsy school. Teaches all over the world. And he is the leading expert now in fascia. And he, because, you know, I worked with him years ago on this, and nobody knew anything about it. And he he knew about it because of working inside the body, but he didn't understand the ramifications either. The only ones that were really working on it was the Germans, and they were using, for doing um, rolfing and, and pushing this stuff around to sort of keep it fluid and movable, all these fascists, because they end up actually gluing together in your body, and that creates the strain and the pains and the, and the twisting and hurting and all pulling against those. And this... Um, Kling, Klinger or something, Klingman, I forget what his name was, but he, he um, they started all this research, uh, oh, I don't know, five, six years ago, it got sort of serious, and at the same time, I was in it, 
and I was trying to find anybody, and I couldn't find anybody. The only find, find a guy that had any interest at all was Gil. Now, here's what I'm going to tell you what he just sent to me. And he was actually just in Germany, in Berlin, at a conference recently. Hold on, let me call this up. Yeah, hello, my good friends. I was um, emailing back and forth with my friend Gil Headley, who owns an autopsy school. He's, he's the world-renowned specialist in fascia. And I've been working with him for years now. Now, he sent me some stuff about the vascularization and changes and so forth, but then about this interstitium. Now, I've been talking about that. These are the little balls that are in the, they call it ball clay, and it's just below the skin, and it's in the, it used to be called alveolar tissue, which is a soft, spongy, movable tissues that keep your, your flesh coming back, and they're, they're little balls on straps. Now they're called interstitium. Anyway, he says, as for the interstitium, he responded with a video. He, he, this is the video he sent me, and it's an autopsy, and it's very, very graphic. So if you don't want to watch it, you better go away, <laughs> because it's extremely graphic. Now, um, anyway, he's, he says, um, what is new, though, is that the folks in his pathology department finally understand that what has been perceived as artifact in their microscopes is now understood to have a place in microanatomy. I, sh I show the same layers at the gross macro level, and um, it changes with the geography and so forth. So I don't know whether they're starting to come around or not, but he, this is an autopsy, and you're going to be, um, it's going to be nasty. Now, before we go to that, I just wanted to show you another email he sent me. Hold on. All right, this one here is um, about the fuzz, and that's what we're gonna, I'm going to be showing you, which is this fascia. They never knew what it was. They called it fuzz. They used to throw it away. They thought it was nothing. The only one that was ever interested in this was Gil Headley that I could find five or six years ago when I started in, because I realized mud fossils are preserved because of this fascia. That's why they're all separated. They separate out in life exactly like they do in, in the mud fossils. <laughs> That's why um, Devil's uh, Tower and has that all those little tendon fibers are, are, are separated and all the organs come out separated, the lungs, the tissue, the, you know, the hearts, and they're all in one big chunk. So you well, how did that Well, it's the fascia. So anyway, I, be, I work with, with um, Gil long ago and he and then I asked him about the membranes what he thought about that and he says right here he says um well first of all he says he, I should go into his uh here it is up here this library www.gillheadley.com and you can go up there and watch all his autopsies if you get into that and I, I do because it's it's the mud fossil stuff it's what I'm looking at petrified I'm telling you, you wait, wait do you see the autopsy? Absolutely unbelievable. And the fascia layers, just phenomenal. This guy really, really is a, he's a master. All right, now, so he says that he shared all his best videos up there. And then he has this other guy that he was working with over in Germany. Um, as for your intuition about cancer and the membranes, you're exactly correct. Please investigate the work of Peter Friedel over in Germany, this guy, who uses amazing filming techniques has captured video of cancer cells migrating in these tissues, these, these um, membranes. In real time, he actually watches them eat right through. It's truly phenomenal, he says. I saw the footage of the recent International Fascia Congress in uh, November in Berlin, Germany, where he called these membranes pathways conduits to invade the body. So, all right, here comes the autopsy. All right, this is graphic, so uh, this is six minutes, and he's going to be um, showing the different layers of, of membranes. Now watch. Here's belly wall number three, not Mr. Agape, not Ray, but another form. I pre-dissected the superficial fascia, I flip it over around the abdomen. Is that the money shot? No, if I walked away, I'd come back and there would be crispy bits. There's something there. Can you see it? No, you can't really see it. Oh, maybe you can. Uh, can you see that? You can miss that. See the layer? Yeah. Right? In your, in, your in your pursuit of the famous stuff, you, you tend to just blow through the less famous stuff. You know, you just pass by people on the street and I look up. So there's, there's a membrane there. And wouldn't it be cool if I could say, cut that new coil snot into a fashion? It would take a knife. There we go. 
That stuff is tough. See, an anatomist cutting something with a knife, this is how you get the things, right? An anatomist, anatomy is to cut up with a knife. If you can cut up a fascia with a knife, it's a fascia. Do you see how it's felted, transparent, slippery? It has tensile strength. One, 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 one. <laughs> how much if I let go of it, it recoils into a tiny bit of snot. <laughs> There's, there's like nothing to it, right? It actually reminds me of the arachnoid. I'm just, look, at these, look at these things, though. You see these in the mud fossils. You see these things like this. You see these in the mud fossils. You see the goo in between. Oh, he's got a bunch of collagen in it. And the fact that it's slippery tells me it's got a bunch of elastin and, 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 and mucopolysaccharides. Sounds like that. Mucopolysaccharides. Yeah, that's what it sounds like. Mucopolysaccharides. Mucopolysaccharides. You know what that means? That means that, that is mucus. Now, it must be just on the belly wall, right? No, let's keep looking. Catch your thigh. This is hip, thigh, uh, um, and knee. I've pre-dissected the superficial fascia. You can see there's a membrane on the yellow, right? There's a membrane on the deep side of the yellow, and then there's more membrane over the deep fascia. We're inside a membrane system in this dissection. I'll tell you what, you can come up here and watch this is six or seven minutes, and then he's got a ton of autopsies. I sat through a lot of them. I learned, you know, that's how I learned. You know, um, and um, there, these fascia layers are, that's your immune system. That's your immune system. Once you get past that, then you got the, 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 the enemies are inside of your cellular matrix where, you, you know, you really got to get your big guys out there, your lymphos, you know, all the white cells and all those things. And they attack these things coming in. Now, if you have a multiple area of invasions, if you have low bacteria all over your body, I mean, they're not going to be able, they're going to be overwhelmed. So there's going to be sites that break through. It's just like trying to invade a fort and, and having so many guys you can overwhelm the thing you know they may have good invaders uh, protectors in there but you may not have enough guys to cover all the bases you have to protect yourself at the membrane level that requires mucus that requires bacteria and enzymes and transition metals and this glycosate could be a serious issue if it does this chelation like um, this woman from Harvard contends you know it's it's and i guess it is that's exactly what it was designed for is to kill plants by chelating all of their metals out of them so that they can't absorb them chelation means to wrap them up in a in a bag literally wrap them up in a bag sequester them lock them away so they cannot be used so there's so much as my mind is boggled by the what is being allowed and what is being rejected and what is being not even thought about so I hope some of this made sense to you but we, we need to we need to pay attention certainly to the mucous membranes if you have a problem with the digestive system get it under control immediately that is the that's the key to you to, for your health is your digestive system if it works correctly and you're digesting and you have the right bacteria then everything should be smooth, it should be working perfectly, you should have no issues with your bowel movements and, or mucus in there or any of that kind of stuff, pain, you know, um, any kind of abdominal issues. Once you start experiencing those, you better get a hold of it quick because that's when it starts going downhill. And usually it's after antibiotics or some other invasive situation going into your you know, digestive system, something attacked the bacteria that live there and then the candida which is all over it, it's it's um, ubiquitous in your body it's everywhere but it's in controlled quantities when these microvilli compartments become available for occupation zhip, there they go now you got serious issues as they start to invade once they break through the walls and they start getting into your other tissues then, then you're in trouble so I guess that's the last word mud fossil university Thumb it up if you want anybody else to hear it. I'm trying to get the word out. Thank you. Bye.
Okay, this is Gil Headley um, responding to something we were talking about, and he says, congratulations on the progress, it's exciting. Uh, please go to my website, gilheadley.com, and click on the button in the mid-page and open Inner Space Library. Now, and you can do this too, it's free. Now, um, and then he goes on here and he says, this is the best one about what's the fuzz. All right, now, I worked with Gil on this back four or five years ago. And he was the only one in, a, in the world, literally, that I could find that was interested, had inter any interest at all. And the, uh, other than the Germans that were doing uh, research on pain and, and the, uh, all the fashion in the body. Because I, what I was looking for was a, a guy that knew about fashion. Nobody did. They called it fuzz. See, what's the fuzz? They used to call it fuzz. They used to rip that out of there, throw it away. It's nothing. It's just extra. It's like packing. They thought it was nothing. It's one of the most important things in your body now. So in which I go into more detail about uh, this intersection. Now, that was the other thing they just said they found a year ago. Oh, a whole, whole new organ hiding in, in plain sight. Well, I was talking to Gil about this five, six years ago, that, that same layer. Anyway, and he says, as for your intuition about the cancer and the membranes, you are exactly correct. Please investigate the work of Peter Friedel. And this is where he was in Germany just recently. To, uh, well, he says, um, who was using amazing filming techniques, <clears throat> has captured video of cancer cells, cancer cells now, migrating in these tissues in real time. Truly phenomenal. He can actually watch them invade these these membranes. I saw the footage of a recent International Fascia Congress in Berlin, uh, and he called these membrane path, membranous pathways, the conduits to, to attack your body. This guy knows what he's doing. Wait, you see the autopsies, and if you if if you don't like graphic, gory details, you, you best not watch. <laughs> All right, now you heard what Gil said, that the membrane invasion is the key. Now, where are these membranes, and what gets invaded, and why is it getting invaded? What breaks down? What's the issues? Well, these are what's called brush border microvilli. What does that mean? Little, 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 tiny little pockets. So, so small that they can't even see them, and they have these little bumps sticking out, and they almost look like little fuzzy hairs. But they're so small they can't see them, they look just like flat to anybody looking at it. You need an electron microscope to even know it's there. However, it is critical to your health. And why? Uh, a brush border, striated border, is the microvilli, little tiny pockets, covered surface, simple, and then it goes into a bunch of big words. Um, it, it covers the pockets, it, it covers skin areas that are inside your body, and I'm calling this anything that keeps you separated from something else. There's nothing more than skin. Inside your body, it's the inside of your blood vessels, it's inside of your intestines, but it's skin and it has these built-in pockets that hold the things that do the digestive. Now just listen to this. It's so simple when you, you just listen and think. You know, it says the fuzzy appearance gave the rise to the term brush border. All right, now, where is it found? It's found in the small intestine tract. It's where you absorb things. Absorption takes place. The brush border of the intestinal lining are the site terminal carbohydrate digestions. This is where you digest stuff. They say, oh, the carbohydrate diet, the this kind of diet, the no sugar, the all kinds of things they do. Well, you're causing your, your digestive stability to be bounced around. You know, you have things down there, they want certain things and to digest them, to eat them, they produce the products, you stay healthy. The, the, the bacteria that lives there says, okay, I'm good, yeah, yeah, just keep doing what you're doing. And so all of a sudden one day, so what happened? The guy stopped eating the stuff that we usually live on. So what, what am I going to do? I said, oh, you're going to die. <laughs> and then what's going to happen? Well, you're going to be invaded. Who's going to come in? You're going to come in with that um, candidas. He said, what's that going to do? It's going to eat a hole in that spot where I was living. He said, what's going to happen then? Well, they're going to invade into the body, and it's going to eat into your body, and then you're probably going to end up being pretty damn sore. He said, what's going to happen after that? It's just going to grow and grow, bigger, 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 and then it's going to cause, it's going to be like a tumor. He said, what's going to happen after that? He said, well, by that time, it's into your real serious tissues, and then it'll start floating around. These are kind of invaders, and, and that candidus is only supposed to be, it's supposed to be in your body. It's supposed to be there. Everybody has it. Nobody is walking around right now does not have it in them. But some people have them in excess. And when you have it in excess, it takes over. It becomes the boss man. 
She says, all right, you dudes, get out of here. Get out. I am coming in. And I'm taking over, and by the time I eat through your little membrane, friends, you're in so much trouble that you are never going to get out of it. Now, at that point, you, you what do you do? You don't just keep feeding something into you to try to kill the things that are trying to kill you. You, kill the, you just got to paint the, the walls up again. You got to get that mucus. You got to get those bacteria working together, fill those voids, block these buggers out of there. Otherwise, they're going to come in and get you. I'm going to come in and get you. That's what they're doing. They're attacking. I'll show you right now. And Gil said it. And I, I, I'm going to tell you, this was so circuitous to, to get to these microvilli. And I don't, I honestly, I'm going to go back through it and see if I can figure out how I, how I came here. But this is a smoking gun. I'm going to tell you that right now. All right. It's coming back to me. I was checking into all these different chemistry that was created by something else. I'm going to look back at that in a second. But it, then that's not how I got into brush border transports in isolated brush border membranes. So I go to that. Now let's go back to how I got to this. Alright, so I'm back here at Analyne and I'm doing the chemistry on this trying to figure out what's going on and somehow that brought me to this right and left hand rule stuff and then some peptide antibiotics Anyway, I, I don't. I got to be honest with you. I don't know why I, I jumped from this to that other stuff. But let's see how I even got to this. <laughs> I'm telling you, if you do research, the way I do research, I just go click one thing to the next. If I can't understand something, I want to know what it's all about. And 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 by the time I get to the end, I understand it. Sometimes I don't understand how I got there. So I'm trying to put put my pieces together. So how did I get to analyze? Okay, this is apparently how I got from here to the other things. Now, alpha keratin is a substance that makes fingernails and hair and um, all the things in mammals, the structural components. And I got down further and further and further down here and then uh, somewhere down here. All right. Focal adhesion. So I'm thinking the synthesis begins, the synthesis of them. So the, how it gets there begins near focal adhesion. So on the cell membrane. <laughs> so I go to cell focal adhesions. Well, I never heard of these before. I don't think many people have. Focal adhesion is these little furry things that stick off of the the cells and into the extracellular matrix, which is all the gooey things that you are not supposed to be into your cells, outside, extra, extracellular, not inside the cells. You have internal cellular gooey stuff, and you have outside the cells gooey stuff. The outside of the cells gooey stuff carries the nutrients and bacteria and all kind of nasty stuff in all kinds of places in your body, you know, not necessarily some of it's nice and clean and hopefully inside your your blood and so forth. You you got the, you got little macrophages and things going around or eating up all of these things that are trying to invade you. That's that is the job of your your extracellular immune system. Now, your cellular immune system is is its barrier. It's it's walls. It's cell membranes. It's membranes of every order. And there is approximately four layers, at least that we know of. And those layers are, are infused with those chemistry that I said. That they're integral. They are part of those layers, built in micro little pockets that fill with these bacterias. And if the bacteria is not there, you are going to be in trouble. It's as simple as that now.